Hey everyone, welcome back or welcome to Psalms in Solitude where we're walking through the Psalms together Monday through Friday during this season of social distancing, physical distancing, and while our church is not gathering together. So today we come to Psalm 17 where David uh, has a prayer of protection or for protection from the Lord. This is Psalm 17, David says, Lord, hear a just cause. Pay attention to my cry. Listen to my prayer from lips free of deceit. Let my vindication come from you, for you see what is right. You have tested my heart. You have examined me at night. You have tried me and found nothing evil. I have determined that my mouth will not sin. Concerning what people do, by the words from your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. My steps are on your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call on you, God, because you will answer me. Listen close to me. Hear what I say. Display the wonders of your faithful love. Savior of all who seek refuge from those who rebel against your right hand. Protect me as the pupil of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who treat me violently, my deadly enemies who surround me, they are uncaring. Their mouths speak arrogantly. They advance against me, now they surround me. They are determined to throw me to the ground. They are like a lion eager to tear, like a young lion lurking in ambush. Rise up, Lord, confront him, bring him down. With your sword, save me from the wicked. With your hand, Lord, save me from men, from men of this world, whose portion is in this life. You fill their bellies with what you have in store. Their sons are satisfied, and they leave their surplus to their children. But I will see your face in righteousness. When I awake, I will be satisfied with your presence. The overall theme of Psalm 17 is similar to one that we've seen a number of times already. David praying for protection from his enemies. He's, he's recognizing his own righteousness, remembering his righteousness before God. He's recognizing his, the evil of his enemies before God. He's asking the Lord for help and he has confidence that the Lord will answer him and will protect him. And so I want to I want to drill down on a couple specific things. These aren't necessarily unique to Psalm 17, but they are they're clear here and I think they're helpful for us. So so two things quickly. First, uh, verse 6. David answers the question, "Why do you pray?" Um, which is an important one to ask and answer in the Psalms. Um, why do you pray? Verse six, he says, I call on you, God, because you will answer me. Listen closely to me, hear what I say. This is a simple statement, but incredibly profound. The, the people of God pray because when they do, he answers them. It's as simple as that. And yet, for so many of us, myself included, we struggle to make time to pray. And so we've, we've got to come up with an explanation of that. And, and there's really only two. Either we don't believe that God will answer us when we pray, or we don't believe that he can. Because if, if we believe that he can and will answer us when we call on him, there's nothing that would stop us from calling on him. Now, we would tend to kick back against that and say, well, sure, sure, I, I believe that God can answer me and I believe that he will answer me. But I, I guess what I'm saying is the difference here between the head knowledge for Christians and a, and a heart knowledge. Yes, of course, we believe that God will answer us and of course, we believe that he has the ability to answer us. But if we truly held that in our hearts closely, surely we would pray. We would pray often, and we would pray about everything. And yet we don't. And so we have to ask the question, do we really believe in our hearts what we know to be true in our heads, that when we pray, God will answer us? The other point I want to make comes towards the end of this when David is talking about his enemies in verse 14. He says, With your hand, Lord, save me from men, from men of this world, the, the world, whose portion is in this life. You fill their bellies with what you have in store. Their sons are satisfied and they leave their surplus to their children. Contrasting now to himself, but I will see your face in righteousness. When I awake, I will be satisfied with your presence. 
David's pointing out the enemies of God will get their fill in this life. You might say that they are living their best life now. And many of them, they are living a good life. Their bellies are being filled, David says. So much so that they're, they're passing down to their children who are filled, who are then passing down a surplus to their children. There's, there's a lot of filling happening in this life for the enemies of David and for the enemies of God. And yet for David, he knows his portion is yet to come. He is satisfied in the portion that will come to him. Same for the people of God today. Our portion is not in this life. Our portion is to come. And I think one of the beauties, one of the opportunities that we have in this current season that we're in is that we have, a, we have an opportunity to, to test ourselves in this. Because so much of the things of this world, whether it be job, whether it be routine, whether it be um, things that we're used to going and doing, activities, um, so much of it has been taken away for a season. And so in some ways, we can test whether or not we're looking for our portion in this life or in the other based on how content and how satisfied we are, even in the midst of this season. Now, to, to be very clear, that doesn't mean we shouldn't miss our normal routine. It doesn't mean that we um, shouldn't miss the things that we're used to doing. And to be very clear, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be struggling in this season. Some of us are up against things that are very difficult, whether it be financial, whether it be our ability to be with people that are that we need to be around, whether it be family, elder, elderly family, so many different things, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be struggling right now. But what I'm saying is that all throughout Scripture, we are taught to expect suffering. We're, we're taught to expect difficulty in this life, but also to be confident that this age will pass and that our future is sure in Christ. And so we should, in this season, be confident in the midst of this time that no matter how it gets, no matter how bad it gets, it will not be the end. And we should be confident in verse 15. That I, as David said, I will see your face in righteousness. When I awake, I will be satisfied with your presence. Christian, this season is difficult. And it's, it's more difficult for some more than others. But for those of us in Christ, no matter how difficult it is, let's remember that our portion is not in this life. Our portion is, is sure and it is with Christ. And so as bad as this is, as, as much difficulty as we face, recognize that we have Christ and the Spirit of God has been promised to us that He is with us forever. And let's be satisfied with his presence as David was. We'll see you tomorrow.